Welcome to interviewing part one. My name is Dave Butler. I'm an employment counselor and a retired business executive. On the screen, you see my LinkedIn address along with Betsy's. If you have questions specifically, you can feel free to connect with us and send those. Let's get started. First of all, I want to talk about the biblical support for your career, for your efforts. So in Proverbs 14.23, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. In Proverbs 22, verse 29, do you see a man skillful in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. And lastly, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. The Lord loves that we work. He loves our endeavors. He loves the effort that we put into things. And he wants us to be doing that and he wants us to be successful. Quick objective, at the conclusion of part one of the workshop, you will be able to understand the purpose and value of interviewing and to adequately prepare for an interview. We'll talk a lot about how do you prepare for that interview. So ready, set, hold on a second. Let's do some, some pre-work here. So can you describe your most recent position and company? Can you do it comfortably, conversationally, and very concisely, can you talk about where you worked, what you did, your various responsibilities, how you contributed to the company? Make sure you have that noted because the more comfortable you are talking about, the better presentation you give as you sell yourself. Where are you in your job search? Do you know? Are you just getting started? Is your resume and your cover letters, your search criteria, are all of those things in order? Do you have a plan? Do interviews energize or frighten you? For many people, it's the latter, they frighten you. And the reason they frighten us is because it's not something that we do every day. We don't have to go out and look for a job often and when the uh, time comes that we do, it's relearning and oh, by the way, things change constantly. There are some people who it energizes. They love that, that uh, feeling of being in front of somebody and selling themselves. So how do you prepare to walk in there energized? Let's talk a little bit about the preparation part. And can you introduce yourself with a 30 second elevator pitch? This is really, really important. It's an opportunity for you to, first of all, make a very good first impression by demonstrating your confidence and your abilities and your interest, uh, convey your interest to the uh, hiring guy or, or woman um, about why you want to work there. So let's talk about getting the interview. And again, we're gonna talk about the elevator speech up top here. And, the, and actually when we get to the next slide, there's a bit of a, uh, an example of that that we'll talk through. Uh, but your elevator pitch is, who are you? Why are you interested in working there? What makes you qualified? And you, you got about 30 seconds to do this. It's just a brief introduction. It's not a long, long explanation of who you are. That will happen in the interview, but the elevator speech or the elevator pitch, you got about 30 seconds to do this. So what are the most important things? It's very, very important that you write those things down and form your elevator speech around those. Your job searches and your applications. So they're obviously very important. Job searching and applying for jobs is very time consuming. Uh, it can take an hour or longer to apply for a job, which kind of highlights the focus that, or the, the point that you need to be focused on where you're looking how you're looking, make sure that they're the right places that you're applying for jobs, uh, that your skills meet, uh, where you could uh, absolutely walk in there and do that job and your experience and skills lend themselves to that. Your resume and your cover letter. The resume is very important. It's what will get you the interview. Uh, nine times out of 10, it's how you present yourself. It's the first thing that the companies or the interviewer sees about you. So it's very important that they're clear and concise that they cover adequately everything that you have to offer and what your experience level is. Networking is the next one. Networking is very, very important. And networking is, is kind of thought of being going to a room and walking around, but networking isn't really everything we do. Networking is online. LinkedIn, of course, is, is the obvious one, but when we're online, we're interfacing with people electronically. We are networking, we're making new friends and acquaintances. When you go to events, if you volunteer, any place where you encounter other folks, 
you are networking to a degree. And so you always present yourself that way. Research is critical. Uh, the research available to us today or the information available uh, on the internet is, is incredible. Uh, what we can learn about the interviewer or the people or the company or any of those kinds of things is incredible. And it all helps to build our confidence when we walk into an interview because we're walking into an environment that, that in a way we're familiar with. And then, of course, it's important after you have submitted a resume or an application uh, that you follow up with that. And uh, later on, we'll be talking about that. So this is just real quick, an example of an elevator speech. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. You can do that on the screen. But you'll see that there's a flow to it and a conversational nature to it. And that's what I encourage you to do. Tell them who you are, what you can do, why you're interested in their company, what your experience has been, why am I seeking this position or what am I seeking? It just gives you a chance in a very brief time frame to introduce yourself and make that first impression. This really is the first impression as you ride up the elevator or you walk down the hallway, your chance to introduce yourself before you sit down for the interview. It's even okay to say, perhaps you can help me understand something. Um, but generally, make it conversational, make it, make it very informal uh, with a lot of information compressed into a short period of time. So getting ready. Uh, we call these the no-brainers, the common sense, those types of things. So location, location, location. Now, if you're talking about a restaurant, of course, that's where it's located. In this case, what we're talking about is where are you going to do the interview? Getting ready. I highly suggest that, that prior to your interview that you make the effort to drive to where your interview is going to be if it's a face-to-face -face interview. Know what the route is. Know if there's any barriers, construction, anything like that could, could, that could cause you to be late. Note how long it takes you. Leave a half hour earlier than that. You do not wanna be late for an interview. And by going there and understanding where it is, where's the door? What door am I walking into? Did they give you a door number? Where is it in the complex? That familiarization will help relieve the stress levels that you have as you're heading to your interview. What should you wear? What am I gonna wear? Well, wear appropriate for the position that you're applying for. So if, if it's a laborer position and blue jeans and a collared shirt are good, that's fine. If it's an office type of job, sport coat, and a uh, uh, collared shirt, or for men, or for women, um, you know, a, a nice slacks outfit, a uh, pantsuit, a uh, nice dress, whatever you're comfortable in, dress professional for the level of position that you're going for. What's that smell? Just, just to be direct with that, if you're a smoker, and you're interviewing with someone who's not a smoker, chances are they could be put off by that smell. So I strongly encourage you, don't smoke in the car. I know it's a stress reliever, but do not smoke in the car on the way to the interview. Try to have your clothes dry clean so that it doesn't smell of that because if, you're, if the interviewer is a non-smoker, they may find that very offensive. They may be allergic to it. Same thing with colognes and perfumes. You know, um, uh, you wanna be really careful with it Moderation is the key. I'm not saying don't wear it, but if, you, if you're gonna wear colognes and perfumes, keep it minimal, um, do not have it be overwhelming. Some people are actually quite uh, allergic to uh, perfumes and stuff. And by the way, if the person is, you could end up with a much shortened interview, which may eliminate or greatly reduce your chances of getting that job. And body talk is exactly that, body language. So body language is important. We, we get a lot of information from how people react, how they sit, how they stand, how they shake their hands. Are they looking me in the face? Just be sure that you're conscious of all of that. Practice, practice, practice with people before the interviews. Get used to doing it. Um, being, it, it just displays confidence. And that's what this is all about. Confident in your abilities to be part of their team. In this day and age with the internet, there's a lot of homework that can be done. There's massive amounts of information available to, uh, to all of us. So research the company, their company website, their news sources, 
Find out if they've had a big announcement or a big win. Find out who's in the company. Research who your interviewers are. Look them up on LinkedIn. You can see what their background is, where they've been. Um, this is not to make an interview on a personal level in terms of, of who they are, what they do, but it's to make you feel comfortable. You know who you're sitting there talking to. You might be surprised what you have in common with them, but do your research. It's all available out there via the internet. I've got LinkedIn and uh, the Wall Street Journal on here, two of my favorites. Great places to look. Look at, at the news releases and those types of things. You may find negative information. Don't bring it up, but have it in the back of your mind. Be very familiar with it and be prepared. How, I get asked all the time, how many resumes should I take to an interview? I would take four or five of them. And the reason for that is, is when I meet with somebody to interview them, I may want them to talk to my, one of my team members. I wanna see how they're doing, how they think you're doing, how can you fill the job and you wanna be able to hand a resume to them. References, do not put them on your resume, but have them on a sheet of paper if you want to. Um, one of the places that I find to be very good references is the referrals or references that people write for you on LinkedIn. Cut and paste those, copy them onto a piece of paper and have them available as well. And have a list of your questions for the interviewer. Think about it. Now they may, they may answer all, most of your questions, put a check mark beside them in your, in your uh, book, but have your questions there so you know what to ask. Because there's nothing worse at the end of an interview that you've, you've talked for an hour now and the, the interviewer says, do you have any questions? And you don't wanna go, well, uh, no, no, I think you answered everything, that's impossible. So have some questions ready. Even if they answered them, you could ask for clarification with them, but have some questions. That shows engagement, shows interest. Okay. You want me to do what? So face-to-face -face interviews are less and less common these days, especially at the early stages of the interviewing process. We see more and more phone interviews, Skype interviews, FaceTime interviews, and now the new one is Zoom. These are efficient, they work really well, they're high quality, and it's likely that if you, uh, you uh, get called in for that initial interview, that it will be over video. So be prepared for that, um, and, and getting prepared means, you know, looks count, how you dress. I kind of like this picture next to us, but I wouldn't advise doing that. Um, I would have, I'd be dressed in, in full business garb if that was the case. People do drop laptops and uh, while it's kind of funny when you see it happen on TV, it's not funny when it's your interview. Uh, practice, practice, practice. And you can't practice enough for your interview, especially a video interview. We're all not real familiar with using cameras or being on video. And so it's important that you get comfortable doing that. Um, practice with your friends. If you've got people that you can connect to video-wise, um, have conversations so them. get used to that. But practice your interview questions, how you might respond. There's all sorts of resources out there about standard um, interview questions. So, and technical glitches do happen. So if you know that you've got an invitation to do a Zoom meeting, download Zoom onto your computer before that. Launch it, make sure it works, understand the settings, how to utilize that software to minimize the chance of those technical glitches. But I assure you, they can and do happen at times. And when they do, it's a test. It wasn't planned that way, but how do you react to a situation that all of a sudden it's not good? Do you get angry? Do you get nervous? What happens? Well, when those kinds of things happen, the interviewer is judging your response. So get as comfortable with the software as you can and be prepared for those technical glitches and you can work through them. You can reestablish the calls. It's, it's not a big deal how you react to it could be. So one of the surprising things about an interview uh, is, and it's hard to think of it this way, but it's not about you. Then what is it about? It's about what you can do for my company, what you can do for my team. It's a conversation about why I'm a good fit for you. And the point of an interview is, I've already looked at your resume. I think that you have the skills and the experience to do this, it certainly looks like it. I want to confirm that, I wanna ask some questions. I wanna see how you are, how you react. Um, 
it, it, it really is that, that process of the interviewer getting to know you a little bit better beyond that piece of paper that you submitted with all of your information on it. So I always like to tell people there's really three things you want to get out, leave the interview with having done. It's you want to show them that you don't have any problems, not relative to them, that you won't cause any problems, right? I'm not going to come in and disrupt. I'm going to be part of this team. I'm going to work hard. And I will help solve your problems. I have an eagerness and interest and the ability to respond to whatever you want me to do to help make this job better. We do all have our own problems. They don't want to hear about them. Um, in the conversation, be very careful. That do not go into long-term issues or problems or anything in the interview process. Um, you could talk yourself right out of the job. One of the other points I make to people with interviewing is please, do not answer questions that don't get asked. You can talk yourself right out of an interview. So, so please keep that in mind. And then there's CAR. This is a typical um, interviewing technique anymore. It's the challenge. CAR stands for challenge, action, and results. And stay tuned on that in the next uh, second part of this video. We'll go into that a little bit about how to address those. So that's the end of this first uh, part of the interviewing videos. Um, you will be learning uh, from my uh, uh, associate Betsy uh, in the second part about more detailed things. Um, if uh, you have questions, again, you can go to our LinkedIn profiles and send us communication if you'd like to. But we encourage you to I think that the, the bottom line on this is practice, 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 and prepare if you want the interview to go the way you want it to go. Thank you.